Hey, how's it going? This is Kevin here from Let Me Tech You. So I'm going to do another video. I'm going to put this on my blog and also on YouTube. We've gotten some emails from some people who just had some general questions on how can they um, use these labs to interact with them from either a browser or just, you know, on the Internet. And so I've been using this for a while here now, and I came across just a couple of tricks on how to just make your home lab a lot easier to kind of learn and do new things. So I'm going to go ahead and show you um, what I'm using here is uh, called EVENG and I'm going to go open up another tab here and this is ev-ng.net so basically this is the software that I'm using um, not sponsored by them in any way so just this is what I use because it's you know free open source and some others may use GNS3 so their uh, example of what I'm about to do may be similar but this will be basically um, siloed for this particular environment so you go here I'm using a community version so you can buy a professional version it does give you some other options like keeping labs and stuff open, but I won't get all into that right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my topology here. So this is sitting on my home network and it's just virtualized using VMware. And what I usually do is I'll set these up and I'll traditionally, you know, just manage them, manage them from here without having to go into ASDM or anything like that. Well. Sometimes you may want the ASDM. You, want, you may want to use the graphical user interface that allows you to manage and do other particular type of things that you can't do inside of the uh, CLI. So basically, before I get started, one thing you will have to do for this to work is, let me open up a, so you're gonna have to SSH into your device. So. I'm just going to start. Well, I'll start from here. So basically, I was in this earlier. And what you'll need to do is basically, so if you come in here, SSH in, and you can do an if config. And that's just going to show you your different inter interfaces that are up. And as you can see here, I got, you know, my Ethernet 0, Ethernet 1. Um, it's going to have my pnet zero with my IP address. But basically what we need to do is make sure that our cloud inter, uh, devices can use, um, basically bridge its interface with our actual network. So in this folder here where it says Etsy, yeah, ETC network and then there's an, a file called interfaces. Now this is Linux, so you may use another particular, um, well actually this is EVNG, so that this installation, you, you could use Nano, whatever editor you use, for, whether it's Vim. So I'm gonna go Nano Interfaces. And here we can see what we'll need to make sure is that down here where it says Cloud Devices, we want to make sure that this auto pnet1 is under the interface that your um, uh, basically your internet your your uh, internet is being projected out of for this installation so basically without you know if I can I'll go here and this BRCTO show will show up here that I have pnet1 under this ethernet1 and that's where that's what's being bridged for this device that will add um, up in here so if I, I have a video or actually a blog article on this on my blog so it'll show you like the step by steps on how to set this part up but typically it should already be set up with the installation so I'm going to come in here and now, so I have these uh, ASAs here, which are basically in a highly redundant um, setup and going out to the internet. And then I got this one down here. So what I want to do is be, basically be able to manage these using the uh, GUI. 
And to do that, we're going to connect it to a network. And I'm going to choose this cloud one um, type here. You can name this, you can you know call it ISP or whatever you want to call it. We're just going to add one of these. So this ISP we're going to bring here, and what I'm going to do is, since I'm using the free version, I have to um, add it while it's down. When you pay for the uh, pro version, it will um, basically allow you to hot add interfaces uh, while they're up. So that's one benefit to that. So I'm going to add this to the management port because I don't want to have to put it on any of the other ports in case I want to use them for something else. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now, this doesn't have to be turned on. This will work just because it's already configured on the back end. And we're going to get, go ahead and start this up. Now, the great thing about EV, Eve and G is that uh, you can basically just click on your devices and it'll open up in another tab. So you can use it directly in the browser. It's all HTML5 based. So we're going to wait for this to load up here. And I'm just using uh, the ASA V image. Um, it's just a free version, um, just a virtualized free version of the uh, ASA platform. Um, comes with all the features and things like that. Uh, being able to add the GUI will basically essentially give you just more functionality and some of the things that you can learn. So this started up pretty fast here. So I'm going to go ahead and just I already have some configuration set on this just from some labbing and testing that I've done over the, over the course of the last couple of months. But I'm just going to go show IP address. So actually, i got to go into enable mode. Password in. So you can see, you don't see that management port. But as you can see here, I have it here. There's a shutdown command on it, no name on it, security level none, no IP address. So what I'm going to do is go into configure mode. And when you're on the uh, free version, you will get this little license state is unlicensed. Um, so basically, without it being licensed, you just don't get like full network throughput through it. I think you only get like 100 kilobytes per um, 100 kilobytes um, through the actual interfaces, like as far as like speed, if you tried to use it. So we're just doing this for labbing purposes, so this won't matter at all. But I'm going to go ahead and go into configure mode. And I'm going to go into that interface management 00. zero. And basically what I want to do is I want to make this management only. IP address is going to be DHCP. So I want this to pull. What, it, what this is going to do is pull its IP address from my internal network's DHCP server. I'm going to do a no shutdown. So that's going to bring it up. And I'm just going to do a security level 100. So this is going to make it the highest. So basically with ASAs, you got 100 as the highest, zero as the less um, secure. Basically, that's, that'll be for like your outside internet. Um, some people may do like 50 for their DMZ, stuff like that. So now that that's set, I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of there. And that might take a minute there, but let's see here. So it's still on the sign there. Let's give it a second. It might take a second for that to come across on our, um, so I'm using a um, FortiGate firewall for my D, um, firewall at home and my DHCP server. So it might just take a second for that to come up. So while that's doing that, we're taking some time there. And let me just check the configuration. So I can do a show run interface management zero slash zero. Oh, so let's do this. Um, conf T. We also, let's go ahead and give it a name too. Well, that's. Let's 
Zero slash zero name if MGT. All right, so gave it a name. Now we have an IP address for uh, IP address is a one nine two one six eight one slash thirty two. So now I can take this IP address, go into another tab, and go HTTPS one nine two dot one six eight dot one slash one thirty two. Well, well, actually, one second. So what we need to make sure is that we actually have HTTP enabled um, on this. So I'm going to do a show run include HTTP. Uh, let's see, server. Let's see here. So basically, we need to make sure that this is allowed out so I don't see that so what we're gonna do is go into configure mode again HTTP server enable and then we want to do HTTP and then where we want to allow um, so since this is a lab network I'm just gonna go ahead and put allow this from any and then we're going to do management. So this is uh, now going to refresh this. Now this is up. And we're going to go proceed. Now I can get to this. And this is the, and if you don't have ASDM installed, this is what will come up. And you can install the ASDM, ASDM launcher. And then what you'll have to do is once that's installed, sometimes if you're on Windows 10, you will need to go to the ASDM launcher, go to open file location, go into the properties. And you want to won't take so you're going to see all this and it's going to be a bunch of other stuff so this invisible dot vbs run dot back keep all this what you'll want is uh put c colon backslash backslash windows backslash system system 32 backslash ws w script dot exe and what this is going to do is allow that to execute there's some bug or issue with um it running on windows 10 without that set that way i found that online so now what i'm going to do is since i already have it installed i'm just going to go ahead and run that and i'm going to put the ip address i don't have a username so i just got a password Now, this is where that unlicensed thing, so you see you're being rate limited to 100 kilobytes per second, and 100 connections will be imposed. So just a lab environment, so that won't matter. You still get the full functionality. So now that you got this running, so we are on 9.14, so relatively newer. There probably may be some newer versions out there, but for what you're going to probably need to do, this is going to be um, very efficient now. So now... What you could essentially do is add additional other interfaces that you want to work. So let's say, you know, I go back here and I want to add an object, another network, cloud one. And let's add this to this one. So this is one that I had already had set up. I'm going to put it on that management port. We're going to start it now this is set to DHCP so you can set it static in there I just did DHCP because I, I didn't know an IP address on the top of my head to use on my network so whatever range you're using for management you could set that up to basically um, work I'm pretty sure you might even be able to utilize this um, 
one network to assign other IP addresses here. So basically, being that this can get here, you might be able to network it to be able to talk to your switch or another firewall or go through the, but if you can just add these to it, you know, it may make it a little simpler if you want to kind of segment off having to figure out how to route DHCP across the network to get all these IP addresses set up. So if I come in here, let's see what this one was set to. So this one is 131. So if I come, I think I already had that in my ASDM. So if I come over here and I click here, it might pop a box to talk to it. So yeah, let me try and close out of it and go back into it. Could still be coming up from from it being down, but let's see here. So yeah, it looks like uh, that might be, and, and, and one thing that could be going on is I haven't tried using both at the same time. So if I take this off, I might be able to then get to this. So that could be a limitation or maybe something I'm hitting. Whereas like now both of these can't be up at the same time while I manage both GUIs using this bridge. So that could be something that I'm running into. And I think we can go ahead and stop. But before we change that, let's save the config on here. Copy run start. Let's try that now here. Oh, it actually looked like it went through. So, huh, okay. Maybe I didn't need to turn that off. So now, as you can see, yeah, it did go through and we're able to get to that ASA as well. So now that's a simple little um, fix to get your ASAs, your virtual appliances up and running. Uh, you may be more of a GUI person than a CLI person. And this works with other vendors as well. I've tried this with Palo Alto. So if you're um, working with Palo Altos, um, any other you know appliances like Ubuntu, things like that, this is a great way to get these installed and going on your network so that you can SSH into these from any machine in the house and not be tied directly to the uh, browser. Again, thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to comment, message me directly, or email me. Um, uh, I'll be able, I'll put some information on my blog, letmetechyou.com. Actually, I'll uh, just share that here. So I post daily, sometimes weekly, monthly uh, articles on different configurations. So anything from OSPF, BGP, um, any different type of cloud. Uh, um, things like that. Uh, I'll be doing like some Terraform, Ansible um, things within EV and Z being that you do have that ability to now connect it to the internet. You'll have those abilities to uh, intertwine different things like CloudFormation or Ansible, um, Terraform, things like that that could maybe tie in with your local network to your cloud environments. Again, thanks for tuning in and Hope to check, check me out next time, and if you have any tips or any other information you'd like me to share, just let me know.